guys and welcome to Tasha Tuesday. So last year I did the Disney College program and in today's video I thought I would go through some of the things that I wish I had known before I had gone so that anybody who is thinking about doing the program or is doing the program can know all these things and it's going to be useful for you guys for when you do the program. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to cover in this little video is expenses. DCP is not cheap, especially if you are from overseas like I am. You have to pay for a whole bunch of things. For example, before you even get to America, you have to pay for your visa, your insurance, and your first week of rent already. And that's not including any of the times you flew and stayed in hotels to go to interviews or to go to visa appointments on top of all of that. And then once you actually get all of that, you need to pay for flights and hotels for when you're there until you can move into your apartment. I believe I spent between four and five thousand dollars before I even started my program. So just be aware of the cost so that you can factor in all of that into when you're saving and budgeting for going to do DCP. The next category is work. When you're on the Disney College program, it is like having a full-time job. It is not a working holiday, you don't get to choose your hours, you are there to work for Disney. It is a full-time gig. You can work between 32 and 50 plus hours in any given week depending on your location and how busy Disney is at the time. You will get long shifts. I'm talking 10, 12, even 14 hours. I once did three 14 hour shifts in a row during cheerleading. I was exhausted. You could be working up to 10 days in a row of these super long shifts. They do try and give you at least one day off a week, but it means that your day off could be on a Monday one week, and then the week after it could be on a Friday, and you have to work all the days in between, potentially up to the 14 hours a day. You don't get paid very much. As an Australian, I was getting $20 an hour. That is my minimum wage. In America, my minimum wage was $10 an hour. I do believe it has gone up to $11 or $12 now um, as being part of the DCP, but it's still half of what you are making in Australia. So don't expect to be making huge amounts of money. You kind of get enough to live by. You have enough to pay rent, you have enough to do some of the activities, and if you're really good at saving, you can save. But if you're not like I was, then you kind of have enough to have a good time there. Next, I'm gonna cover housing and transport. There are four housing complexes. Patterson Court, Vista Way, Chatham Square, and The Common. Each one of them has various rent between $120 all the way up to $200 a week, depending on which complex you stay at and how many roommates you have. For example, I was staying in a four bedroom, eight person apartment in Chatham Square and I was paying $120 a week for my house. When you get offered a position during the DCP, you can choose preferences about which housing complex and how many roommates you have. For example, my first housing choice was the commons, but my main priority was I didn't want to have bunk beds. So I chose houses and rooms that had equal number, for example, six and eight occupancy. That's another thing to note. Some houses will have bunk beds. Usually a one bedroom, three occupancy and a two bedroom, five occupancy will have bunk beds. These tend to be slightly cheaper because it's less rooms but more people. Your house will come with the bare minimum. Ours came with a bed, a dresser, sofa and chairs, and then like essentials for a kitchen, like a fridge and an oven. You will need to buy everything else. This includes bedding, a TV, a lamp, coat hangers, and in our case, we had to buy mugs and spoons because our house didn't come with that. The buses suck! If you remember my video from last week where I talked about the bus from hell, it does happen. Buses catches on fire, buses are late. Do you just have to remember to be early, check the bus schedule, and make sure you leave plenty of time to get to work. If you're an American and you are debating whether or not to bring your car, my recommendation is bring it. You will be so thankful. I know a lot of my friends who didn't bring their car and regretted it. In fact, I know one of my friends from DCP didn't bring her car and got it shipped to her from Colorado just so that she could drive it because she hated the buses. The buses come at different frequencies. For example, if you were lucky enough to work at one of the main four parks, those buses come between every 10 and 20 minutes. So you will never have to waiting for a bus. If you don't work at one of the main four parks and you work somewhere like a resort or like me at ESPN, you'll find that the buses are either 50 minutes early or two minutes late for your shift. ESPN had two buses running that came every 40 minutes. And if you missed one, you'd have to wait another 40 minutes or catch an Uber to work. 
Next, I'm gonna cover friends and roommates. For those of you who are wondering, you can pick your roommate if you would like. There are plenty of pages about DCP, so just go find one for your year. A lot of the times they'll do roommate surveys to see how compatible people are. You kind of can pick them and then connect when you apply to the same form as picking which house. You both have to be connected and both have to have the same preference of houses in order to be able to live together. Or you could do like I did and go completely random for your roommates. This ended up being really good for me because it meant I got to meet people that I had never talked to before. So it was a really new experience for all of us. And it also meant that if I was didn't like something a roommate did, for example, I didn't like the way they left the kitchen. I didn't feel uncomfortable telling them that because I didn't pick them as my roommate. I didn't know anything about them beforehand. It was getting to know them brand new. It is important to bond with your roommates early on. It'll make it much easier to get along and to discuss issues when they arise later on. I had two lots of roommates. The first roommates I had all moved in on the same day. We went to Walmart and did shopping. We laughed over the fact that we didn't have any tea, any cups for tea and we drank them out of bowls. We had dinner together and it was all brand new for us. We got along really well. And then I had my second lot of roommates who we had, this was during my second half of my program where we moved in and although we did go to dinner and we did bond, all of us were kind of in a routine of going to work and having our own friends and while we did get along, we weren't as close as the first lot who we had bonded over moving in and this lot kind of, we had already established we had friends outside of the house. Make sure you do get along with your roommates, at least partially, because they can make or break your program. That's another thing. Your roommates don't have to be your best friends. I got along really well with my roommates, but I hung out mostly with my work friends because I spent the majority of my time at work getting to know these people, and after work we would end up going to a park or going to a bar or going somewhere to hang out, and that's just the way it worked. The friends that you make, whether that be from work or roommates, become like a second family to you, especially if you're international where the time zones are different and you don't get to see your family, they become your second family, they become your support system and it's so important that you have that and that you have something that is your overseas family. You will inevitably have at least one roommate who was on an opposite schedule than the rest of them. In my household, it was myself and my roommate Kata. We both had super early morning shifts and we would finish in mid-afternoon while the rest of my roommates all started in the afternoon and would finish late at night or really really early in the morning like 2 or 3 a.m. Next we're gonna talk about money. Now this is mostly just spending money and what I have discovered from being on DCP about where my money went and how much I needed to have. Make sure you bring over money for the first few weeks. The first week I believe you do traditions and then safety classes at Disney University but you don't start properly working until the second week and you won't get a lots of hours, you'll get the very bare minimum until you actually get established and know what you're doing. I bought over about two and a half grand just because I wanted emergency money and I needed money for starting off for the first few weeks for food and to decorate my house and stuff like that. Do try and save some money. I was really good at saving for the first half of my program but during the second half of my program I went a little ham and just bought everything. I didn't even save. So try and save at least the bare minimum each week. Trust me, you won't regret it and it doesn't mean that you can utilize those sales later on during your program. Because trust me, that 40% sale hits in October for cast members, you're going to want to have money to buy all the merch. When I was on my program, I learned to be a lot smarter with the purchases that I did get. For example, with my shopping, I would buy home brand stuff, which I never do because I'm not a big fan, but I would buy home brand stuff so that I could have more money for other things like ears or makeup and stuff like that. Make sure you stock up on emergency food drinks so you get paid a lot for when weeks that you get minimal hours. For example, on weeks that I got paid a lot, I would make sure I bought a tin of soup or some extra ramen, so that on weeks where I was either too tired to go to the store or I didn't get enough money to buy everything that I would like at the store, I always had something to eat at my house. You will be poor and broke at some point in your program. Just trust me. It happened to everybody I knew. At least one or two weeks out of your entire program, they were not, they did not have any money at all. They had enough for rent and that was it. And this is just something that I learnt to live with. It didn't happen very often. I think there was exactly one week where I only had enough money for rent and I had $5.52 left in my bank account 
for that entire week. And I survived because of the emergency food. If you do want to get extra money, you can pick up extra shifts, which is fantastic because it means more hours. Next, we're going to cover days off and park days. You get access to the parks when you finish traditions and get your blue ID card. Lots of people go to Magic Kingdom that first night and watch Happily Ever After. It's kind of a tradition on its own, so I would definitely recommend going. If Magic Kingdom's not your thing, I would definitely recommend still going to the park that your friends or your roommates go to as a nice bonding experience. You do get time to play in the parks, but remember DCP is like having a full-time job. So you are going to be working long hours, so as long as you manage your time right, you should have plenty of time to play in the parks. Try and find a balance between working, playing in the parks, and doing adult responsibilities like shopping and cooking and cleaning, which are very important. Trust me. It is also really important to budget in rest days. I can't stress this enough. There were times where I would push myself, I'd go to work for 45 hours in the week, and I'd go to a park every day after work, and on my days off I would go, and I just got burnt out so quickly. So make sure you have rest days, even if it's just half a day, where you lay in bed, you relax, and you rest, and you kind of do nothing but sloth and have you time. Make sure you do things outside of the Disney and theme park bubble. If you are international like me, you will have to fill in a cultural activity report every month to show that you are learning about America. This cultural activity can be going to see a historical site, going to a national park, or even simply experiencing Walmart for the first time. The next is miscellaneous. I made notes while I was on my DCP about what I think other people should know, so I'm just gonna read them out so that you guys do know and that you guys can be better prepared for DCP. Florida is hot and humid. You will be sweaty all the time, so make sure you invest in a good sunscreen and probably one of those quick dry towels. Very good for the hot weather. You will also be tired 99% of the time. Going to work, going to parks, you will be exhausted, which is why rest days are important. But I also just learnt to be tired. DCP is only a year at most, and I kind of went, I'll experience it all, and then I'll just be in a coma for three days when I get home. DCP programs can run for anywhere between three months and a year, and my recommendation is extend if you can. I know a lot of people regret not extending and try and get back as soon as they can. I extended and I'm still trying to get back because it wasn't enough Disney for me, so extend as long as you can. When you are packing, bring over minimal clothing. I made the mistake of bringing almost my whole wardrobe. It was a big mistake. I bought lots of clothes while I was over there and I had too many things. I had 12 suitcases coming home, okay? That's too many. Make sure you pack very minimal. Pack like half a suitcase worth of clothes because you will buy more. It rains almost every day in summer in Florida, so invest in a good rain jacket and just be prepared to get wet every day. Bring at least one pair of good walking shoes. You will be walking a lot and even though they're not the cutest, trust me, some days your feet just need that little bit extra support when you're walking around the park. And because it's a vacation spot, no one's really going to notice that you're wearing proper walking shoes. Make sure you have a list of things that you want to do while you're on your program and get them done early. I made a list of things I wanted to do and I kept going, oh, I've got time, I've got time, and I didn't end up finishing all of them. So if you have a must-do list, try and get that done as soon as possible because then you have time and room to do other things that you didn't even think or know about. Make sure you go to housing events. They are a really good way to meet your fellow neighbors and they're super fun. Also, free food. There are gonna be days where it's really, really hard, where you're missing your family, work's been stressful, you've just had one too many guests yell at you, and you're gonna feel like you wanna self-term on those days. Push through, and my recommendation for this is to find something that brings back the magic for you and go do it. For example, mine was to go watch a show at the Magic Kingdom. My two favourite to bring back magic were the Friendship Fair or Happily Ever After. These would just bring me so much joy and I could see the faces of the people around me when they saw the magic that was happening on stage and in front of the castle. And it would bring back the memory of why I was doing this in the first place. It's because I wanted to bring the magic to them as well. The magic that they're feeling, that I'm feeling watching this, I want to be able to give back to these people. The last thing I want to tell you is that it sucks when it ends. I mean, it's fine for the first few weeks. You're coming home, you catch up with your friends, see your family, and then 
you just kind of always feel like something's missing. There's not quite enough magic in your day. And even though you do try your very best to bring it back, it's just not the same. So make sure you make the most of your time at DCP. It goes so fast and you will want to go back the minute it ends. Disney College Program changed my life. I met so many friends that became my family. I had so many amazing experiences and I can't wait to go back and hopefully make more magic at Disney one day. Let me know in the comments below if you are planning on doing DCP. If you have any other questions about it, let me know in the comments and I will be glad to answer them all. Could talk about Disney College Program every day, all day, trust me. Give this video a big thumbs up if you love Disney. I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you all next week. Bye!